Hello and welcome, Glorious Badger here. Today we're going to paint an Imperial Fist. Half of this video was uh, recorded from my recent Twitch stream. Uh, and the remainder was filmed off camera. If you're wondering what's going on the top left hand of the screen, um, I initially painted this miniature the wrong color of yellow. However, I did want to show off. Uh, we have gone with a white zenithal highlight and a pink shade from below. Um, I have used Screamer Pink as the sort of shadow color for this. This means that when you spray over it with the yellow later on, it will add a nice pre-shade to the miniature. So the color I used to begin with was Vallejo Model Color Golden Yellow. This turned out to be not correct. Um, I, I figured out halfway through that I was using the wrong yellow. I should have been using Vallejo Game Color Gold Yellow. So I cleaned out the airbrush and restarted. Um, this color is definitely slightly more golden, richer, slightly more vibrant um, and I turns out I do like I do like the final um, result which is a good thing anyway so I've got I've got the uh, initial bit of the twitch stream where I was painting the wrong color just to, on the top left just to show you what I was doing um, however we have got to the miniature painted um, gold yellow through the airbrush. It is a very nice color. Now I'm going to attach it to this miniature holder right here. Make sure it's firmly attached. As you can see, it's a lovely yellow. It's not too rich. It's not too dark. It's just right. I'm not sure what I'm doing now I'm on camera. Talking to chat. I should really probably cut this bit out. Anyway, um... So looking at the miniature, first thing we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing the black parts of the miniature. Then we'll be doing the undersuit parts. Um, then we're going to do any met metallic parts. And then the eyes and leather bits. So here we go. Using Citadel base color a bad and black. We're going to paint everything that needs to be black and everything that will be metal in the future. So that's the shoulder trim, the gun casing, the gun barrels, the magazine, the scope. Going to speed through a lot of this. Um, I think in future the videos are going to be split at least into two, rather than having two, rather than having one sort of extra long video. I think splitting it into a couple of parts is going to be the way forward. However, I do like the idea of having the color at the top of the screen, or, or in a similar fashion certainly displayed while I'm using that color. Um, I do find it slightly tedious having to try and scrub through a video waiting for that those few seconds when um, I'm trying to locate a color being used on a video. 
So this is my way of doing it. It may not be for everyone, but marking out the the back of the undersuit was is going to be painted uh, grey. But I was just uh, marking out all the stuff that's going to be painted black. The the Aquila on the chest. The little backpack straps. For the life of me, I can't remember the proper name of that thing. I'm calling it a backpack, though. I have tried the red trim for the Imperial Fists. I just don't. I don't. I don't like the look of it with the yellow. So black is what we're going to go with. It is possible to do white trim, yellow trim, green trim. I think purple trim, probably blue as well. Uh, for the chapter mark for the various um, company companies. Now we're going to use Vallejo model color German gray to do the undersuit. So the back of the knees, the butt right there. Probably the the backpack straps as well, which go which hold the backpack on. The inner elbows, those bits. Yeah. Make sure it's thin enough to flow freely. The the groinal bits and do I do the other bit? Yeah, I do do the bit. Why didn't I cut that out? That should have been cut out. Uh, so there's the backpack straps being done. Backs of the knees again. Ah, there we go. The bits around the, the sort of waist. And that should be about it for that. Oh, maybe not. There we go. Next up, we're going to be doing the leather. I'm going to start off this time using P3 Guncore Brown. I do really enjoy using P3 paints. I don't know if this particular um, way of doing leather is my preferred, but it's what we're going to go with today. How, so we start off with Guncore Brown. We're going to take a few coats. all the leather pouches, the holster. I'm also going to go over the purity seal with the brown at this point in time. Second coat. Now we're going to use Steel Legion Drab. We're gonna we're gonna cover the most most of the leather parts in this colour, leaving the P3 Oh, was it follow? Leaving the P3 colours in the darkest parts. It's not gonna make a huge difference um at the end of the day, but it's just how I like to do things. And now we're gonna be doing the, the highlights and some scratches using Citadel Base Zandri Dust. You could potentially go slightly brighter as well with something like Screaming Skull. Just going to do all the edges. Um, make a few scratches. We'll also do this point. The Purity Seal, as you can see there. We're now going to use Screaming Skull 
to brighten up the purity seal. Just like that. Leaving a bit of the previous color before. Now we're gonna use Citadel Base Corn Red for the wax part of the purity seal. We're gonna follow this up with some Mephiston Red, which is my favorite red. Here we go, just on the edges. Just like that. And now we're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet, just for a couple of brighter points. We're now going to use my favourite metallic paints, Vallejo Metal Colours. They are generally for the airbrush, but they can be painted on very smoothly. So we're going to start off with Vallejo Metal Colour Steel for the gun parts, barrel, magazine, the bit at the end that I can't remember the name of. Just like that, it goes on very smoothly and is a joy to work with. We're now going to use Exhaust Manifold for the backpack. For the vents, and we're going to use Exhaust Manifold for the vents on the backpack and the exhaust parts. Just like that, a couple of coats and we're done. Now we're going to be painting the eyes. So I'm going to break out my normal greens that I use for lenses and eyes. We're going to, obviously, part of my recipe is bilious green, which is the best green. However, we're going to start off with Caliban green. I'm using Dark Angel's green in this case, but it's the same color. Then we'll be using Warpstone Green for a slightly smaller part of the lens. And then we're going to use, I'm using Scorpion Green, although apparently it's called Moot. And then finishing off with Sweet Sweet Bilious Green for the brightest parts of the eyes. Now I do remember, now I do know that I forgot to paint the gun lenses. We will get back to that later. We're now going to use Citadel Lair Colour Ishin Grey. Yep, that's how I say it, Ishin Grey, for the edge highlighting on the gun casing. Looking back at it, I should have probably done the shoulder pad trim with this as well. For some reason, I just only do the eagle on the chest. Now we use Dawnstone to slightly brighten things up a bit get the gun casing and then the chest eagle again slightly smaller points of Dawnstone before finishing with Fenrisian grey so a bit of edge highlighting generally something I avoid I'm not the biggest fan of it I suppose we could go all the way up to Space Wolves grey well my Space Tools Grey, which is a lot brighter than the current one, I believe. Um, and then potentially even white, if you're feeling super fruity. Now we're going to do the oil paints. Here we've got Windsor & Newton. Ivory black. I'm putting it onto some paper or some cardboard. Um, this will absorb any excess linseed oil and help speed up the drying a bit there is now the focus metal palette uh, I like to use these when I'm using oil washers to mix it up to the right consistency get a bit more odorless thinners mix it in there till we get a nice sort of wash consistency we don't want the oil rushing off the the miniature. That's the back of my hand, enjoy that. So we're just gonna get load the brush up with some oil, wash, and we're just gonna touch it to the panel lines, which is what we're gonna be doing now. Just like that, and it should. The low viscosity of the low surface tension of the um Oil wash should just 
bring the color straight along the bits we want to define. We don't want to be too messy at this point. We are going to go back and tidy it up later. Um, but we don't want to take forever, so we're just going through the body quickly right now. Touching the brush to it and letting it do it the work for us. It really doesn't take too long. I'm now going to put this to one side and wait for it to dry. I'm back. As a cotton bud, we're just going to gently, gently drag the cotton bud along the surface of the miniature. Um, I do make a mistake coming up. I used a bit too much pressure and removed some paint, unfortunately. Right here. See? There we go. Three bits of paint I removed. Um, so I was slightly too energetic with it. However, um, just be gentle and it'll all be fine. Um, going to remove all the majority. It's going to remove the majority of the excess black ink. Uh, you can use a brush to do any more tidying up with some odorless thinners. We're now going to do the burnt umber. We will still be using the uh, Winsor & Newton Winton burnt umber. There's some uh, odorless thinners right there with a bit of burnt umber on the side. We're going to mix it up shortly and mix it to the right consistency. I'm not entirely sure what I was doing here. Not doing it on camera. Get better at this badger, seriously. Right, it is too thick at the moment. So we're going to have to add some more thinners. We want it not coursing off the miniature. We want it staying on when we apply it, but not too thick. About that sort of consistency, I don't want to tell you exactly how much how much liquid to how much paint you need. It's it's going to have to be a practice thing. I, I'm still I'm still trying to practice it. As you can see, it's not coursing down the body. It's staying where it's put, which is what we want. Coat the entire miniature, and then we're going to put it to one side and leave it to dry. back again with some tea. It's almost dry. I'm going to slowly and gently take another cotton pud to the miniature. We're going to remove the majority of it. We're going to leave we're going to leave a lot of it in the recesses and like where shadows would start to build up. Um and where grime would build up. And we might even do it on camera. Maybe. Nope. Nope. This I've got I've got I need to improve this bit. I was gonna cut this out. However, I th I thought we'd end up just record just putting it all on YouTube. Just this time and in future edits I will I will be better, I promise. However, it is, I am liking the look of this. It's um, giving a nice effect. There are the arms. There's a streaking ground I'm going to be using shortly. I've super glued the arms on. Looking pretty fabulous right now. Uh, to be honest, I would be very happy uh, once he's based um, using this on the tabletop. I, I am actually worried. I am actually wondering if I should do the streaking grime. We're going to do it. 
but I would be very happy using this on a tabletop right now. All I'd need to do is basing. However, we need to paint the lens on that scope. So here we go, let's do this quickly. There's my Dark Angels green in the old hex pot. Warpstone glow, Scorpion green, and we will use Bilious as well. So quickly, Caliban green on the scope. Followed by a smaller amount of Warpstone green, Warpstone glow. And then a tiny bit of Moot green or Scorpion green. Followed by an even tinier bit of bilious green. The best green there is. Or there was. Touch it up to the eyes as well, just to brighten them up a smidgen. Looking good. Right, here we go. Here's AK Interactive Streaking Grime. I'm going to use a pretty horrific brush right there. Um, I will start I will tidy up this brush it needs a bit of a bit of softening in some thinners before we get to work give the AK interactive a shake dip the brush in uh, load the brush up and here we go so we're just going to a nice coat over the entire miniature with the AK Interactive Streaking Grime. Going to give the entire thing a good coat. Just like that. And then I'm going to be leaving this to dry. So I'm back again, and this is uh, dried up. Got a cotton bud here. We're going to slowly remove it away. We're going to slowly remove the grime. Currently a dry cotton bud, however, I will be soaking it in a bit of thinners shortly. Um, we just want to bring out the color where we want. It's it's a, it's a very nice way of sort of doing your miniatures. You're, just re you're revealing the colour. Tidy up the back of the legs. Shoulder pads. Now I will be doing, when it comes to painting the army, I will be having squad markings underneath them. I'm going to use a brush as well to tidy things up a bit, some edge some edge panelling and stuff like that, with a bit of odorless thinners on, just to refine the shapes, refine the streaks a bit. It's quite a relaxing technique, it's, you're in no rush to paint, do this at all really. Can't see what I'm doing because I'm painting off camera again. Yeah, there in the end. Right. This is all should be cut. <laughs> yeah, this should all be cut. This is terrible. happy with that we can you can refine if there's any other little bits you can use a brush as I said earlier to tidy up any detailed parts which need clearing or something just like that 
It's looking good. I'm happy with this. Maybe clean up the the, the breather. Clean up the breather a bit. Now, the next stage after this, we are going to do the basing. I'm going to use a pre-colored basing material. Uh, I will be using Astro Granite Debris from Games Workshop. The reason I didn't do this before is because I didn't want this streaking grime coating the pre-painted base um, just just for a matter of speed really I would have had to gone around and sort of tidy it up a little bit however he's looking good here while that so while that oil is driving while that en enamel is drying I'm gonna do the base I'm gonna paint the lip of the base so here we go astro granite debris I'm using a dental tool going to apply it to the base just like this. Just sort of smush it around. Get the right sort of look you're going for. Just an even coat. Just something nice and quick. And some of it's off camera again. Well done. So that has to dry. While that's drying, I'll paint the lip black. Just like that. Now, at this point, folks, I would advise waiting for this to dry thoroughly. And then varnishing. I'll do a gloss varnish followed by a coat of matte varnish. Because next up, we'll be doing pigments we got some AK interactive pigments and we got some Alclad pigments to use we got some pretty horrific brushes here to dust them on with we're going to start off with AK interactive asphalt road dirt it's a darker color it's going to be mostly around the feet the lower parts of the boots. We're doing this to help bed in the miniature to the base, make it look like it belongs. Now we're going to use the next color, which is Alclad Dark Ashes Grey. It's slightly lighter, so we're gonna move we're gonna move this colour slightly further up the leg. To sort of below the knees, sort of. Just like that. We're gonna also put some a lot over the actual base as well. And now we're going to use AK Interactive City Dirt. Bring this grey up slightly further up the legs. Brushing the pigments on, moving it around. It's looking good. We've got a final pigment to do after this. I'm going to use a brush just to move the pigments around a little bit. Try and get them, try and hit the edges of those lower panels. Add a bit of a highlight. So the last pigment we're going to use is the Alclad Light Ashes Grey. Doing a final dusting of this, so this will be 
even further up the legs. Maybe onto a bit of the torso. You can see the dust in the air right there. Bit of the torso along the lower arms. Slightly onto the lower bit of the backpack as well. Keep it moving around. Until you're happy. Yep, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the placement right now. So... Now we can use a slightly wetted brush to add highlights, so to speak, or clean off any parts that you want not showing pigments. So here we go, I'm just going to tidy up a few parts which, got, which I don't want to have any pigment on. I'm going to do that like that. Now, once you're happy with it, I would suggest getting a spray bottle of water so and give it a spritz to set the pigments. They will go darker while the water is wet, and then once it's evaporated, it will go back to its original color. Here we go. So, I must say I'm pretty happy with this. I will be very happy to put this on the tabletop. It's taken not too long. Now let's have a look at my previous version. We used a different yellow for this one and not as much weathering. This guy definitely looks like he's more recent to the battlefield. Um, these guys actually look as though they're have been in battle, or at least have been trudging through mud and cities, rather than straight off the off the uh, parade ground with their shiny armor. I do have a question: Out of these two, do you prefer the one on the left, i.e., the one we've painted today, or the one on the right? I would love to hear your comments in. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below about what your preferred one is. Now for the army, we're obviously going to have... I've got Forge World shoulder pads. Um, I've actually gone with the Mark VI shoulder pads for the Primaris. So that's no trim on the left shoulder pad. So... But we are going to be doing transfers on the right shoulder pad for squad markings and things like that. Folks, I would like to say thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's been a long one. Future ones, uh, I'm going to be splitting into two parts at least. Um, if it's been a help, I would love to hear your comments. It would be amazing if you would be able to subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future videos. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.